Paying attention to his mask, we were poking soul of Bill Thompson. Get away mask and the follow the Son of the Holy Spirit. May grace for the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the human Holy Spirit, be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we now acknowledge our many sins. So we pair ourselves to celebrate the sacred Eucharist. I confess, Almighty oh God, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have felt to do, through my faults, in my fault, in my motives, in my fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels, the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to the people of the will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, the Lord of the Lord, the Lord of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty ever living God, whose will is to restore all things, and your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant and pray that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock, when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered, when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the stray I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks, God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, 
so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then in his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end. When he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When do we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? The king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. And he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill, and in prison, and you did not care for me. They will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs. You will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least, you did not do for me. These would all for eternal punishment, the righteous for eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. But there are people in Christ, they have a lot going on in today's gospel passage, for sure. This is the conclusion of the liturgical year, which tells us that this is Christ the King Sunday, King of the Universe. Next Sunday begins Advent, watching, waiting, preparing for the birth of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Today, in Matthew's Gospel, he ends his big three weekends in a row of surprises. Remember, we started off a few weeks ago with the five wise and five foolish virgins. Then we had the stewards. And then, of course, today, those rams, those sheep, those goats. What happens when we fail to do the simple things in life? So when we look at Leonardo da Vinci's panel, The Last Judgment, hanging up there in the Vatican, that spectacular painting, you see Jesus Christ as the center of the world, separating the righteous on their way to heaven, and those who are damned of the wicked sinners into the torments of hell. If you look at the faces of everybody, you see bliss and joy those who are saintly and redeemed, those who are damned to eternal torment, utter shock and dismay. How did this happen to me? This is the way most of us picture final judgment. This is not really the of terror that Jesus paints today, is it? Because every single person that is talking, asking our Lord a question, both the good and the bad, are shocked. How did this happen to me? Didn't I do what I was supposed to do, Lord? They have a surprise. And he tells them, no. It's neither the good nor the bad expect the ending that comes. Because they did not anticipate such a list of things that had to be done, not once or twice when we feel like doing it, but every single opportunity to give a chance to. Both sets of the people respond to the judgment of the same question. Lord, when did I ever see you? Naked, or in prison, or ill, or needing some comfort, or poor. I never saw you. You're Jesus. You've got it going on. You're the Son of God. You're resplendent in your dazzling white robes. I never saw you suffer. Well, except for that one time on the cross, but I turned my back and ran away from you on that one, so technically I never saw you suffer. And then he keeps repeating over and over again the things that need to be done. Suddenly the saint and the sinner, they didn't realize that compassion, mercy, service to our brothers and sisters, that's really the criteria of getting into heaven. And when we pull that, when we are greedy and selfish, and we turn our backs on the people in need, there's a lot of them, we're turning our back on God. Somehow this is a surprise for us still. We expect great judgment to be based upon great actions. So we're always thinking that we got to do something extraordinary to catch the eye of God. But really, in this parable, this is what Jesus is talking about. Ultimate rewards, ultimate damnation and punishment, ultimate gift of heaven. It's all based on the simple things of what we do, how we behave, how we act. If we feed the poor, if we clothe the naked, and we visit the prisoner, if we show compassion to the stranger and welcome them, if we give water to those who are thirsty, food to those who are hungry, we do these kind of things. This is stuff of eternal life. And yet this seems to be precisely the point of the parable. Hence the shock, the surprise. There may be very few times in our life when we're actually going to be called to be a hero. Some headline-making act of courage that stops everybody and says, that is an extraordinary person. Few of us will have a chance to make any kind of major changes that are going to change the world, or discover a cure for a ravaging disease that continues to go, or somehow be the peacemaker against warring nations. You and I have a chance to do a whole lot of things here, right here on the ground. To offer that cup of cold water, to alleviate that small corner of suffering, to light a small candle against the darkness, to speak out against so many injustices that we witness. It may not seem like a whole lot to a whole lot of people, but apparently Jesus Christ thinks it's a pretty big deal. Because the way we handle these small moments of life, these things that you and I can actually do, and it's not because it's gonna make us feel real good inside, it's because we see the need and it has to be done. Because far too many times there are too many people who are walked over and walked by and forgotten, and it just compounds their suffering. Then we interject. Remember this gospel passage. How am I going to get to heaven, basically? What do I got to do? This is the way. 
final chapter of the public teaching of Jesus Christ is found in the Gospel of Matthew. Winding it all up the wise and foolish virgins, the stewards, the sheep and the goats. All these parables are essentially a parable about judgment, each of which involves a pairing of good and bad examples. Five wise, five foolish, two faithful, one lazy, lazy servant, the scared to death, the blessed sheep and the wicked goats. It is the faithful who are rewarded first, and those who dare not do a single thing for whatever foolish reason, those are the ones who are held to last for judgment and damnation. In other words, each of us can actually do something before our death. We don't want to be the person banging on a door that's been shut to us, or be thrown out into the utter darkness, or thrown into eternal fire that's prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew has a point. He intends us to be surprised, maybe a little bit shocked. St. Matthew is writing this gospel about 45 years after the death of Jesus Christ, after a generation had lived with this newfound religion called Christianity, 45 years after Palestine. Christianity was not new anymore. The return of Jesus Christ the King had not happened. And now what do we do? Matthew tells the story. He retells the gospel parable that we just heard. Still, keeping those surprise endings and that shock in there for us all. He wants the church to be stirred up once again to become more lively, active, and a lovely people of God so that we can indeed become redeemed, so that we can truly become saints, so that we can truly become his children in heaven. But we shouldn't be shocked when we die. We should have to stand before God and surprise and say, Really? That's all I needed to do? Take care of the people around me the best I could? Feed them, clothe them, visit them, welcome them, love them, care for them? See that they don't starve to death? See that they don't get kicked out of their homes? I mean, the little things count? Absolutely. You gotta have to stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of all many, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We got the Son of God, born of the Father, we were all angels. God from God, the light from light, to God, to God. We got the not made, consubstantial with the Father, from all things are made, for us men, for our salvation. Down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of Virgin Mary. Amen. For our sake, it is crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven to seat at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my sin for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to any resurrection of the dead. My will come. Amen. We now present our prayers and needs to God our loving Father. For Pope Francis, Bishop Dwayne, and all priests, deacons, and religious, that the Holy Spirit continue to give them the grace and strength they need to proclaim the good news to those who have not heard. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, your prayer. For especially the priest vocations, to the priesthood, and to consecrated life, so that all generations will proclaim God's love for us, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, your prayer. For those who are suffering ment mentally, physically, and economically during this pandemic, that they will find help during this crisis, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, your prayer. For all of our relatives and friends who have died, especially those who have died from the virus, that they may be welcomed by the angels and saints in heaven, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, your prayer. For the special intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts and minds.
We pray to the Lord. The Lord, in our prayer. And the intention is got to be the offer of sacrifice for our most deceased loved one, friend, and family. For they are welcome in eternal heaven with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray. Slavity, Father, we thanks for this opportunity to present our prayers and needs to you this day. We you hear the message according to your holy will. It's for always that your Son lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Pray am I sacrifice of yours, and be up to God, and to my Father. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice to which the human race is reconciled to you. We come to pray that your Son himself may bestow all nations, the gifts of unity and peace, through Christ our Lord. The Lord and in you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to be right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace. He might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule. He might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and light, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels of thrones and dominions with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as that end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Take this 
all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. <laughs> Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, and bread of life and chalice of salvation. Give me thanks to you, held us worthy, to be in your presence and minister to you. Come, we pray, for taking of the body and blood of Christ, we will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all and pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May merit be co heirs of eternal life. May praise and glorify you, your Son, and Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
we receive the food of immortality, we ask the Lord, the glory and obedience, the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, who may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A quick announcements. Outside, you will find a letter from our bishop for the latest updates on the pandemic. It will be on the table. Please take one home, read it, pray over it. Secondly, uh, Thanksgiving Mass is, of course, Thanksgiving Day at 9 a.m. It is the only Mass of the day. And finally, this is our annual turkey drive for a whole lot of families that are begging us for food this year. I'm up to 60 families that are asking for a turkey and a few sides. So we have a youth group, or some remnant of a youth group. They're standing up there. They're wearing their face masks. Their eyes are sad and pleading. They're holding up a sign that looks like a chicken that's been attacked by a turkey. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, do what you can to help out. Um, we really want to try to feed these people. It could be their last Thanksgiving in the place that they live in. Because starting December 1st, they will be evicted, most of them. Because, you know, that's what's happening now. Uh, you're as generous to parents that ever encountered. And we can help these people. This is a small thing that matter. The Lord be with you. May only God continue to bless you. May the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ending. Go in peace, to love, and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, and in this and that, if he ever takes things to witness the stairs of the dead, may God renew you, we don't need to live And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell safely, with all evil spirits who roam throughout the world, and you ruin of souls.